Hi and welcome to part 8 of this Django Crash Course. Today we are going to add images to the posts, we are also going to add a sitemap to the whole project and also a robots.txt file. We can begin with the images. I'm going to go to the front page and show images here on top of the blog posts. So if I then go to the editor and find the models.py in the blog file, then I want to add one more field here. You can add it at the bottom here image equals models.image field upload to so you need to select where this should be uploaded to then I just say uploads slash blank equals true and null equals true because not all posts needs to have an image we need to make it possible to have blank and null and then I can go to the settings.py file because I need to configure where this uploads to should be located. So if I open up settings.py and scroll to the bottom, we already have something called static URL, but we can add something called media URL equals slash media. And this is the URL in the browser, but we also need to specify where the files should be put on the server. To do that, we say media root equals base there slash media, like that. So this will create a folder called media in the base of the project. And inside there, the files from the models.py will be put inside an uploads folder. So let's try to stop the server and make and run the migrations scripts. Make migrations. No changes detected. Okay, maybe I forgot to save the file. Yes. So let's run it again. Okay, it says that I need to install Pillow in order to continue. So if I just copy this and run pip pip install Pillow. This is a library for handling images in Python. So naturally download it and install it. Great. So then we can try to run the make migrations again and then the migrate script. Perfect. So now we have images for the blog. So we can run the server again. So if I now go to Chrome, I can edit a post and add the image. I can add it to the first post. So now we have an image field here and I can choose. Great. So I can just select one of these random images and scroll to the bottom and save. If I go in again, you'll see that here is now currently an image. I can clear it and I can choose to select a different file if I want to. And if I go in here, it should be available, but it's not because we need to configure the URLs for this as well. Because Python or Django isn't good at handling images, but for locally, we can just add a little bit of configuration here and it will show. So first I want to import something from Django so we can access the settings file. So by using this now we can access variables in the settings.py file. And I want to import something called static from Django conf urls.static. This helps us show static files on this demo server or this server here. And then at the end here, we just plus and now we use the static function. And we import the media URL and set the document root for the files. So if I save now, go back here and refresh, you will see the image here. Perfect. And this is inside the media uploads folder. And there it is. Next up now is make it possible to show the image here. So if I find front page.html, then at the top here, above the title, you can say figure class image. And then img src, and then we just say, sorry, double curly braces post dot image dot url like that. So if I now go here, refresh, the image attribute has no file associated with it. That's because only one of the posts has an image. So we here we can check if the post has image by saying if post.image and only then this will be rendered and if. 
save, refresh, great. So now the image is showing above this post, great. So then the next step now is to make it possible to show this when you go into the detail page as well. So here I want to show it at the top. So I can just copy this code and then go to detail.html and paste it here. Save, go back and refresh and now it's showing there. Nice. And if I wanted to, I could actually put it outside these columns like this. So it will be much bigger than the text below. So it looks a little bit better actually that way. Just need to fix the code like that. And if there are an image, I also want to add an extra clause here, MB6. So we get the margin bottom 6, which gives us a space below the image. Great, so now we have fixed images for our blog. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link to my Patreon in the description below. The next step is now sitemaps. Sitemaps makes it possible to go to the address and then sitemap.xml. Sitemap is an XML file with information about all of the pages, so Google will have a much easier time understanding the structure of your website and it's easier, easier for Google to index it. So everything of this is for search engine optimization. Great. So then we can go back to the editor and then inside the crash blog folder here, create a new file called sitemaps.xml, no sitemaps.py, sorry. And then we can begin by importing the sitemap function from Django from django.contrib.sitemaps import oops import sitemap and I want to import a reverse function from django.shortcuts import reverse and I want to import the post model here as well and the category from blog.models import category and post now we can begin with the category sitemap class category sitemap and here we just pass in the sitemap def items and we have a uh, reference to the, to the class itself now we can just say return category dot object dot all so we get all of the categories from the database and now Django will handle the rest for us there. Then we can do the same for the posts class post sitemap. Pass in the sitemap. Def items self return post.objects.filter post.active. Sorry, status equals post.active because we want them to be active. And we can also add a last modification date to the posts. Def last mod self return obg for object dot created at and also need to pass in obg there. Now we can save this file because we don't need anything more there. Now we just need to go back to the URLs and add it here. So I need to import one more function here from django.contrib.sitemaps.views import sitemap. Now we can import the two sitemaps we just created from dot sitemaps import category sitemap and post sitemap. Then I just want to configure this a little bit by saying sitemaps just create a dictionary category and here we just pass in category sitemap and the same with the post post sitemap and then inside here we can add it at the top path sitemap.xml pass in the sitemap and sitemaps sitemaps so we have the reference to this and then add a comma at the end there so if I save now, 
I think there is an error. No module name site blog dot sitemaps. And that is because I added all of this to the URLs file inside the blog application instead of this one. So sorry about that. And the same goes with the static files. They should also be in the other. So let me just take all of these four here, remove them from this file, go to crash blog slash urls.py, paste them at the top here, like that. Then go back to the other URLs file and copy this file, this line. Paste it here and then we go back again because I want this line as well. Sorry about this mess. Paste it here and then go back again to get this line which should be on the top here. And then it's just this left. Then we can save that file. Go back to the other and paste it at the end there. So now I can refresh attribute error. The category object has no get absolute URL. Okay, so I need to create a new function for this. So if I go here, so let's just copy this function name, go into models.py in the blog file. And in the category here, I need to create a new function, def get absolute URL self. And then here I just need to return the path to this site. So return slash percentage s slash. Then at the end here we say self dot slug. So if I save now, we'll probably get this error on the posts as well. Great. So I can copy this function and paste it here. And I just need to add one more parameter like this. And then in here, first self.category.slug and then this one. So let's try to refresh now. Template does not exist. Okay, and the reason for that is that we need to go into settings.py because we haven't added sitemaps to this list here. So I need to append django.contrib.sitemaps and save. So now, hopefully this should work. Yes. Here we get the three categories and here we get the two posts which is active and when they was created. Perfect. So now Django will, so now Google will be able to find this and get the information about the structure of your website. Next step now is to create a robots.txt file. This is so you can make a, the bots not to go to, for example, slash admin or if you have any other private addresses or blog posts you don't want them to find and similar. Through this, I just want to create a view for this. So if you go into core slash views.py, then I want to create a view here from def robots txt, pass in the request parameter. And then here is a text equals, then you create a list, user agent, colon star, because this should go to all of the bots. This allow colon slash admin slash. So they should not go to the admin page and try to index that or something like that. And then Below here is a return HTTP response slash n oops slash n dot join line text. Set the content type equals text slash plain. Great. So this function just takes this list and create a string of it. So you need to import this from django.http import http response. Great. So now we can copy this and go to the URLs file in the crash blog and import the view here. 
and then here is a path robots.txt robot.txt name robot.txt and save and we can try to go to the website slash robots.txt yes so now this file is there and the bots can find it perfect so now we have images for our blog, we have robots.txt file and a sitemap. And that's all of the functionality we're going to add in this blog series. In the next part we're going to deploy this project to a live server. If you have any questions about today's code, feel free to leave a comment below and answer as soon as I can. See you in the next video.